It's been raining non-stop for the past like four days, three days. I'm supposed to remember back in, in one of the early episodes I was talking about this girl that I was helping out with her work. I had to go over to her house and help her out with some music. I was supposed to go over there again today. Uh, <laughs> I do not want to go out in this weather. No one in the no one in the world wants to go out in this weather. I, I this is like rainy enough that I can cancel. Right? This is rainy enough where it's like this is basically a torrential storm. I can be like, hey yo, look outside the window. I am not. I'm not. I'm not trying to take a bath on the way there. I'm not trying to swim there. <laughs> I'm not trying to swim there. I'm trying to. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean, guys? Do you know what I mean? This is the first time since I started the series. Since the first episode, it's the first time I'm. I am not ahead of myself. I've been finishing videos. Oh, thunder! Whew, sick. I've been finishing videos like. Uh, they, I've basically been finishing videos early and scheduling them, right? Like, finishing them either a few days or the day before and then scheduling them to upload. But I finally run out of content that's, that's been scheduled. Um, so I need to edit the video I filmed yesterday, today. I think it's hailing, yeah. That's hail. That's like fuck hail. I just realized I put my fingers directly here when I was filming that. Oh no. There's a spider web right there. I just put my finger directly in the spider web. Fuck. Well, and the sp there was a spider. There was a spider there. And <laughs> it pulled on me. <laughs> shit these past few days. My plan is to make some actual vegetables. What do I have? I have um, spinach, right? Yeah. Spinach. I'm going to make some spinach. I'm going to make... Now, this is the thing. I'm still not sure. I'm, I'm halfway caught between do I make an omelette, like a Spanish omelette, or do I make, like, 
two eggs and put them in a wrap. Both would be good. Do you know what? I'm going to do it on there. Do you know why? Lack of carbs. That's good, right? You don't need carbs. I remember, carbs, they make you fat. Okay. So, we're making a Spanish omelet. Which means I'm going to need some eggs. Of course. What are we going to put in this omelet? Now that's a good question. Spinach, we've already decided. If you're making an omelet, you ought to have some cheese in it. So that's decided. What else are we going to put in? Maybe some mushrooms? Don't be making alarm noises while I'm trying to record. These are off. What day is it today? Pretty sure these are off. Are you kidding me? Right, I'm gonna pause the recording until this shit stops. Okay. Um. Over here, I have one roasted red pepper that I found right in the back of the fridge. I knew I had them. A, 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 a little jar of roasted red peppers. They're actually really good when they come in the jar. I know it's like, why not just roast them yourself? But when they're like sitting there brining, it's actually really good. Um, that will make it delicious. Other than that, the only thing is I'm contemplating whether I want ham or not. Because ham would be delicious, but we've already got one type of processed meat. I don't think we need another. Ham is not the healthiest as well. Should be good. All right. Let's saute my spinach. See, cooking videos are always good because they just take up a bunch of time. They take no effort from me because it's just doing stuff that I would already be doing. Great. Bunch of fucking spinach. I love spinach. It's delicious and nutritious. No more. Yeah, that'll be good. Now, here. This is a non stick pan, so I'm using tongs with plastic on the end, rubber on the end. Hopefully, that'll make it okay. Um, in the meantime, I need a bowl to mix my eggs up in and stuff. Um, maybe I can make this a bit of a better angle. Is that better? I guess you can kind of see what's going on. There we go, that's good. I'll turn the light on as well so you can get some light on the situation. Just wait until it's a wilt a little more. And then, I will Oops Okay, that's good Now, some salt and pepper Pepper.
Alright, it's done. I'm actually going to... I'll do this off camera. Let's begin the construction. My trousers are actually kind of dirty, I just realized. I'm gonna have to change trousers. I did just wake up, this is my breakfast, okay? Give me a fucking chance. Alright, we're doing a three egg omelette because I'm not a fucking pussy. And before someone says, I know someone, one of you, one of you will say something like, oh, Oh, you're not supposed to salt the eggs. You're not supposed to salt the eggs before you cook them. Idiot. Falling for French memes. You're falling for French memes. The worst thing you can do in cooking. Next you'll be saying, you got to cook pasta in a gallon of water. Or whatever they say in France. They're idiots. Don't listen to them. There's no reason for that. In fact, you should cook pasta in a small amount of water to concentrate the starch in the pasta water so that when you add it back to your sauce it thickens the sauce more and emulsifies the sauce more also I like a lot of black pepper okay I drained the water from the spinach let's move this out of the way clean my workspace put this in to the bowl oh maybe, yeah fuck you know, I should have added that on top of the egg so it doesn't burn up. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. Should have added that on top. Fuck. Oh well, whatever. Right, let's get some chicken. Uh, this isn't the, you know, nicest chicken in the world, but it, it will do. Quite nice actually. It is actually delicious, but it's not like the fanciest chicken in the world, I should have said. And don't worry, I did wash my hands before I start cooking. These pieces are deceptively thin, so if it looks like I'm adding quite a lot, that they are, it is very, very thin slices. So I'm not actually adding like an insane amount of chicken. Oops. This is all clean. I cleaned up this whole area yesterday, so it should be fine. Um, okay. Yeah, that's good. I'm not gonna add the cheese yet. You grate that on top, and this pepper, we are going to saute real quick. Tiny bit of olive oil. You see that right? I'll just use this because we're going to be using this for the eggs anyway. No, you, no need to get multiple tools dirty either. I'm, you know what I mean? Oh, we're, just, we're just warming this up really. We're not trying to do anything too crazy with it. We're just trying to cook it a little bit. That smells amazing. I wish you could smell this right now. This has been in the fridge for a while, so I thought it might be off, but I tasted a bit to check, and it tasted fine. So hopefully it's fine. 
and it smells fine. The, the thing is, there's a lot of water, right? Because it was in a brine. That's really what I'm trying to cook off right now. It's just trying to cook off some of the water from the brine and stuff. So, um, hopefully that'll be good. Because you don't want nothing worse than a wet, soggy omelette, right? That's not something anyone wants. A wet, soggy omelette. Yeah, I'm showing off. Yeah, I'm showing off, okay? Yeah, that's pretty good. Directly into the bowl. Now, you may worry that pouring it directly into the bowl might actually cook the eggs because of the heat. But it seems to be okay for some reason. I don't know why. I've done this before and it doesn't ruin everything. So we can assume it's fine. There is one key ingredient in an omelette which I forgot to get out. Du beurre. Butter. Let's finalize the mixing process. Um, I'll do that off camera. I found a pretty perfect angle. I'm, I'm pretty chuffed with that. Pretty perfect angle to shoot um, my omelette cooking. This is too hot. Bit more butter. How you make things taste good, God damn it! Why do you think French food tastes good? It's because they put so much butter in everything. And this isn't even that much. It looks like a lot, but it's not. Uh, this is this pan is too hot though, so I'm gonna put this in right away to cool it down. Yeah, I should definitely not have put the spinach in with the eggs. I should have add, added it later. That was my mistake. Oh, fuck! Well, I got that on camera, at least. That was a dumb mistake. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, well, it'll be fine. I'll just have slightly less food. <laughs> that was so stupid. Oh, man. Do you know why? Do you know why that happens? Because this is a brand new non-stick pan. This is a brand new non-stick pan and I'm not... Do you know what I should do actually? I'm put extra pepper. And then the cheese on top of the extra pepper. I just love pepper. I'm also going to put some hot sauce in here. Because I forgot to do that. Right, now the cheese goes. But yeah, do you know why that happens? It's because I'm, I'm not used to the slipperiness of this non-stick pan. I'm used to pans being kind of sh like shit because all my other pans aren't non-stick and I've been cooking with them for years and I got a new non-stick and uh, <clears throat> I went to like tilt it, you know, and normally that would just mean the bottom would stick, like the bottom of the eggs would stick to the bottom of the pan and the top of the eggs would then flow and spread. <clears throat> but obviously with this one, it all just slid. Um, and I couldn't react fast enough to save whatever parts fell off the side. Oops. So, we've got some burning shit at the bottom here. Just a bit of a shame. But I'll clean that up afterwards, I guess. Other than that, small spillage, it's going well. That's going to be a, such a pain to clean up. Oh, now I don't want to post this. Now I don't want to post this because it's embarrassing. Cringe. 
But that does look delicious. You can't even deny that that looks amazing. Um, hold on. I should pause. All right, we're putting this under the boiler, as they say in America, or the grill, as we say here. Let's look at the damage. Uh, I didn't actually lose that much. I thought I lost more than, than that. Fuck, that is a pain, though. That is definitely a pain. But I'll clean it up after I eat, and it'll be fine. So yeah, this this is the, how you cook the top of the omelette. This is how I cook the top of my omelette anyway. I know people like to like fold them over or flip them, but I find just putting it under the boiler to be the most reliable option. Um, and yeah, I do use the American word boiler, even though I'm English. Uh, you know, we would call it the grill, but the reason is because it's to differentiate it from like a, a grill grill and a, a grill grill, you know, a boiler grill. They're two different things, but they have the same name here, which is kind of annoying. Alright, that's looking good. Let me cut into it to see if the middle is still raw. Could do with like two minutes longer. Maybe get a little colour. This is a, this isn't a French omelette after all, this is a Spanish omelette. Um, you want a tiny bit of colour on it. Did I mention potatoes? I know you should put potatoes in a Spanish omelette for it to be really good. And I I have in the past done so with potatoes in my Spanish omelette and it was delicious. But um, that's carbs that we don't need in this situation. And so I shan't be adding them. A tiny bit longer. Yeah, that's good, that's done. All right, now watch me fail this. There we go. That is a big fuck off, but relatively healthy omelette. We got peppers. We got spinach. That's healthy, right? That's what health is like. Let's cut through it. See what's in the middle. Cross section. I don't know. I'm pretty happy with that. Even though we fucked up a bit, and. Spilt some eggs over there, which is a bit of a shame. Other than that, I'm pretty happy with it. So now I'm gonna go eat it. All right, we have a knife and fork out. It's good. Um, bring some extra pepper just in case. And I'm not looking forward to cleaning up after that, but it should be delicious. So it should be worth it. Also, it stopped raining. Power of delicious food. It stopped raining. Um, let's eat a bit. Try it out. Just for the camera. Mmm. That is fucking delicious. That is really good. The, the peppers really make it. It's got the sweetness to it. That is amazing. Highly recommend that you make an omelette. If you can make an omelette, because they're the most, they're delicious and they're so easy. 
don't know why. Well, people do make omelets. I don't know what I'm talking about. Everyone makes omelets all the time, but it's a good way to make me eat vegetables. You know, normally I, I don't like um, vegetables on their own, like in salads and stuff. But throw as many as you want in an omelet and it'll be amazing. Well, that was bloody delicious, if I do say so myself. Very good omelette. Now it's time to put things away and to clean up this fucking mess. Because I'm an idiot who doesn't know how to cook. I mean, it was worth it. Plus, that had like half a packet, maybe even more. I'd say that's more. More than half a packet of spinach in it. Loads of spinach. Like, so I can pretend it was healthy. Even though it had also a shitload of cheese in it. Um, but I can pretend it was healthy because I had a bunch of spinach. Um, cleaning up one-handed is a bad idea, and so I, sh I will not do it. But there, you get the idea, I'm cleaning up. And it's raining again. Um, you know, making an omelette is a lot like life. You can make your mistakes, but you also have your wins. You, you, you fail sometimes, but it's a matter of whether you focus on that failure or decide to get up, move on, and end up with a delicious omelette. We failed. We spilled eggs. We spilled some spinach. I had to clean it up. It was a mistake. But did that make the omelette any less tasty? I say... No, it did not. It was delicious. Even without that little bit that I spilled. You can't have any baste without cringe. There is no red pill without the blue pill. This is the life lesson you learn from making an omelette. So, uh, I believe I said earlier in the video that, uh, I was supposed to go help out that person that I helped out before making some music. Now if you look at the weather, you can see perfectly well why I don't want to do that. Um, not only that, but I spent the, the, yesterday and the day before, I was hanging out with Young Sai. That's a lot of social interaction for me. I, I'm, I'm mentally exhausted from two days of social interaction. Um, and I just need a rest day. I can't, can't, can't deal with it. Can't deal with having to do more social interaction. Three days in a row is too much. Two days is already pushing it. Three days is too much. Especially with, um, you know, normies. Uh, so, so I've cancelled that. Or I've delayed it for tomorrow. You know, tomorrow's no thank you can deal with that problem. Today's no thank you is gonna chill and uh, edit some fucking videos because I'm I'm late. <laughs> I have videos to edit. Um, that's that's what that's the problem. Today's no thank you has to deal with not um, social interaction. I used an excuse. I'm not. I feel a bit guilty. It's a true. I I did use a true excuse. I, I did use true facts to weasel my way out of it, but I still feel a bit guilty for exploiting the bad things that are happening in my life right now um, for personal gain. But at the same time, I don't think I should feel guilty because, again, I didn't lie. I just used it as an excuse, but we won't talk too much about that. It's a positive channel. We don't talk about negative things that are happening in my life. Um, we are now going to edit the video that you will have seen yesterday for you, but it will be today for me, of course. Um, so that should be fun. I forgot what that video is about. Oh yeah, it's about optimal web browsing. I need to, th oh, that was lightning. Nice. Um, I need to think of a title. See, I have I have a few titles in mind. One of them is um, why and how I switched, uh, why and how I stopped using Firefox. One of them is, um, optimal YouTube consume consuming optimal YouTube consuming or like the search for optimal YouTube consuming something like that and one of them is like maybe I just installing cute browser for fun and profit one of those two like one of those three tales 
I, I, all of those are pretty good titles. I, I'm not sure which one to use. Maybe I shouldn't mention... You know, the thing is, you have to weigh it up, right? Like, like if you mention Cute Browser, then people who are searching for Cute Browser will be interested in the video. But also, most people don't know what Cute Browser is, so maybe you're... If someone sees Cute Browser, they might be like, what the fuck is that? I don't, I don't care about it. And they, you know, don't care about it. It's not, it does, although it does tell them what's going on in the video, which is what I've been trying to do with my titles, is make them more informative so people know what they're clicking on. It also, um, you know, it doesn't tell them what's going on in the video if they don't have the context for what Cute Browser is. Um, and a lot of people don't, because it's not that well known. So maybe I do optimal, I don't know, I'll figure it out. War. War never changes. <clears throat> I'm sorry, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. War is completely different now than how it used to be. War changes a fuck ton. What are you talking about? War changes. Wars, war changes a lot. Do you, know what, do you know what ancient warfare was like? Now, it's hard to say. No one really knows. Anyone who claims they really know is lying. It's very difficult to find out what ancient warfare was actually like because, of course, everyone who... Uh, people who win the war want to make themselves seem like more, you know, majestic and cool and, you know, brutal and shit for propaganda reasons. And people who lose the war don't really report much. Uh, and, you know, accurate, historical accuracy was not a major concern for ancient sources. Um, a lot of them would write about wars, you know, hundreds of years after the fact. Um, you know, there's that stuff that, like, HEMA practitioners use, the sort of, like, medieval manuscripts for fighting. But most people who fought in wars were not people who were trained fighters, they were just peasants who were conscripted. Um, so that's, you know, maybe it was accurate for these sorts of one-on-one -on -one combat sort of things, maybe knights or nobles or whatever, but probably not that accurate for all an out-and-out large-scale warfare. As far as I can tell, now, please correct me if I'm wrong, because I've been trying to do research on this, and it is hard to find, like, reliable sources and, like, historians who know their shit, but also are, like talking in language that I can understand, not, not like, a sh you know what I mean. Because um, I'm not really I'm that knowledgeable about history. Uh, but as far as I can tell, most of ancient warfare was, okay, firstly, you march on very little food for like two days straight with very little sleep, um, and that's what you do. And then when you're done marching, you're straight there. <laughs> And here's what you have. You've got, your sh you got a shield wall, you've got two armies, they approach each other with a shield wall, and then, you know, you've got your spearsmen, who are just like poking at each other, poking at each other with a shield wall, poking, poking, shield wall, trying to, you know, stab a guy, shield wall, poke, shield wall, poke, projectiles raining down from your archers and your, you know, throwers and whatever, the, the fucking slingshots and all these sorts of things. Shield wall, raining down projectiles. The projectiles weren't meant to kill you, they were meant to make you raise your shield so someone could stab you. But projectiles, shield wall, poking, that was probably most of what ancient warfare was, until eventually there's a break, and then a quick back bit of fighting before the shield wall reforms and you go back to poking each other. That's probably, and then eventually it gets to a point where one army gets their shield wall completely broken, and then it's just fucking like nuts people are just killing each other that's as far as i can tell and then no, but, but then everyone runs away that's the thing it, it was very rare in reality you you to, for, to actually fight down to the last man that almost never happens you could people will just run the fuck away you can't control a, an army you are clearly gonna lose they're just gonna run away um and it also makes more sense for an opposing army to take prisoners for slaves so they can mine the silver to pay the army um, rather than to kill an, ar an opposing army down to the last man. It makes much more sense to take slaves and prisoners. So they probably did that. It's probably very rare that they fought till the, till the last man. It probably was keep poking each other with a shield wall, eventually break the shield wall, shield wall reforms. This goes on for hours and hours and hours until eventually, also almost always in the daytime, uh, ancient warfare almost never took place at night. Um, remember, no artificial lighting was really practical. Um, uh, until eventually one army is dwindled down so much that they just start running away because they know they're gonna fucking lose In which case they either escape or they get captured and enslaved. That's what ancient warfare was probably like as far as I can tell 
Modern Warfare is nothing like that. That is not comparable to sitting in a trench in World War One waiting to get shelled. That is not even a similar experience in any way. That, like, I mean, maybe it's a bit similar in that you're trying to kill people, but that is, like, psychologically entirely different, which is why, although Ancient Warfare was extremely brutal and horrendous to be a part of, most likely, they also, uh, and this has confused people a lot, P PTSD didn't really exist. Like, why are there no records of shell shock before the Boer War? What, like, it, no one knows. No one knows why, th like, there is no real theory as to why PTSD in the same, it didn't happen, I mean, people were probably traumatised by war, of course, but not in the same very specific, because uh, PTSD is normally around, like, one singular event, otherwise it's complex PTSD. But, uh, do you know what I'm saying? Like, it, something about it was very different from being shelled. Uh, being shelled, also, very different from modern warfare. You know, going up to the Germans, digging two trenches, and firing pot shots at each other, uh, you know, and mortars at each other, then running into machine gun fire, most of your troop gets killed, and maybe you get to bayonet a couple people, is also a very, you know, I suppose that's almost similar to a cavalry charge in ancient warfare, but, like, um, that is also very, very different from modern warfare, which is mostly wandering around the desert, um, getting fired at occasionally by basically untrained civilians with AK-47s. Um, no trenches, you know, one army probably has the entire force of one of the world's largest um, military, of the largest military force in human history, the most powerful force. I'm talking about America's, America here. You, you got the, you got America on one side, because let's be real, they're the ones that are really fighting every war. But every war is just America versus Russia when you really dig down into it. Or America versus China as Russia. It's weird. Um, but they don't actually fight. It's all proxy wars, of course. They just they just fund. They they that's modern warfare. They just they just modern warfare is two countries give money to other poorer countries to do their warfare for them. <laughs> that's modern warfare, um, and that's completely different. Driving around the truck in the desert, you can't even compare it to the 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 African stuff happening in World War Two. Like you can't even compare it to that because it's so different with asymmetrical warfare and urban warfare. They're completely different. War changes a fuck ton. War, war changes a lot. I don't know why, I don't know what Fallout is talking about. War, and plus now we have obviously the threat of mutually assured of destruction with nuclear warfare. Like, that's a thing. You, you can just be like, you know what? We can't risk this war going on any longer. Throw two nukes at Japan, fuck it. Fuck them, fuck them, we can't risk this any longer, fuck them. And then just nuke the shit out of Japan, and then they have no choice but to surrender because you've nuked the shit out of Japan. Or, you don't do that anymore because Japan also has nukes, and if you nuke them, they'll nuke you back, and you're fucked. Or, you sit the other type of warfare, which is, you know, uh, some guy runs and just explodes, and a bunch of civilians die. Uh, that's also pretty recent, you know, do you know suicide attacks? Not really common throughout history. Only very, like, normally only very desperate armies would ever carry out suicide attacks when they knew they were going to lose normally for, well, I don't know. I don't know that much. I'm not going to, I'm not going to talk about that because I'm probably just going to spread misinformation if I do that. But uh, as far as I understand, the suicide, the suicide attack is a relatively recent, recent invention. Um, but yeah, war changes a lot. What, what, what are you talking about, Fallout? War is completely different. Also, like, the scale and the fun... Like, everything about war is just completely different. 